Grab your Bibles tonight, Psalm 66 and verse number 18 out of the book of Psalms. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. You'll find them in the book of Psalms. David, for the most part, writes some of his life throughout it. And there are others that we accredit in the book of Psalms as we piece and put together every chapter that is just an incredible book, truly. And I'm preaching on spiritual warfare all through February. Tonight just happens to be the night because this is warfare when you're praying. When you're praying and it doesn't feel like any prayer is being answered. I want to preach on tonight when you pray and nothing happens. Everybody say amen. amen. You might say, Pastor, I don't know where you're going to find that at. Well, I'm going to give you some scripture for it. It's all over the Word of God because oftentimes people need to understand what is hindering my prayer. Have you ever wondered in your life, why is it that God doesn't answer that prayer? Because there is no such thing as an unanswered prayer. There are three things He said back to you. Yes, no, or you're going to have to wait. It's not unanswered. You must have to wait sometimes on some things. Psalm 66 and verse number 18, the Bible says it, this, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you, God, for the series that we're in and a part of. Thank you, God, for our church. Thank you, God, for what you're doing all over the country. I pray that you fan the flames of revival. I pray, God, that you be with our young people, Father. Tomorrow, about this time, we'll have traveled to, to Kentucky, to Asbury College. I pray, God, you just give them a great trip. Give them a tremendous time in that, in that revival. Father, I pray that you guard and protect it, Lord. I pray that everything that is said will go to the glory of the upbuilding of your kingdom. Father, I just thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for sending revival to our country. Father God, I give you praise. Lord, I'm going to stand back and try to fan that flame and pray for them and encourage them, God, because I'm thankful for what you're doing. Lord, we give you praise for our church. Thank you for what you're doing here at Redemption. We're honored and humbled by it, overwhelmed by it, God, overjoyed with it. But Father God, it does not come without spiritual warfare. So Father God, help us to prepare ourselves and get ready. In the name of Jesus, let everybody say amen. And amen. Praise God. I, uh, I want to start out saying, since it's our Wednesday night, folks, I want to start out by saying it like this, and it's kind of like what I tell our Tuesday morning intercessors. I tell them, I say, come on, dry your eyes, wipe your nose, get that look off your face, and get ready because we're going into war. So do y'all mind if I say that to you tonight? Now, intercessory people I can be a little bit different with because they're little warriors when they come in to pray and pray heaven down. And I recognize there's a lot of you that, that cannot because of scheduling be here. But let me say Wednesday night, I kind of feel the same way. Got a bunch of people that just went out of their way to make sure you get to the house of God tonight. And that's not to say we don't have a ton that are watching that could not be here or that have schedules that mandate they be elsewhere. But with all due respect, we love and thank God for this incredible opportunity to do what we do tonight. But I want you to get ready. Tell your neighbor, get ready. We're going to learn from the Word of God tonight and be blessed by it. I want to turn our attention to the book of Philippians, to Philippi, to chapter number four and verse number six. Philippi or to the Philippian people. The Bible says when Paul wrote to them, he said this, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. What a recipe for a prayer right there. It's in Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing. Understand that to live a cautious life. Understand that to recognize that caution must be in your peripheral. It must be in front of you. And you have to be cautious and careful that everything that will be done needs to come by prayer and supplication. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. 
So really the focal point is not necessarily the cares of this life, but endeavor in every direction that you go through prayer and supplication. Let me tell you something, if you've got a prayer life, you've got a happy life. If you've got a consistent time where you get down and pray, it is consistently gonna be time with God that will not go in vain. I assure you, husbands and wives, get together and pray. Y'all need to pray for one another. You are not two, you are one. A man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. You too, sir and ma'am, are one. Do you realize the power of your prayer and the power of your agreement? There is nothing else that God ordained like a marriage when he said, you're gonna leave and you're gonna, you're gonna cleave unto her. Praise God. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that after a while. But let me say this while I'm saying it. It is powerful when we get together and pray. As powerful as that is, when you pull your kids together, your children together, and you pray with them, something powerful happens in the atmosphere because it's filled with faith and expectation. And so it is imperative that we learn to pray. Saints of God, we take a block on Wednesday night and we pray like we have in the last 10 minutes because we honor prayer and we honor a life of prayer. To some people, they may feel like I can do that anytime. You can listen to preaching anytime. We can listen to singing anytime. We can really truly have church anytime. But there's something real powerful when people get stirred up about prayer. It is work. It is effort. You have got to put some energy into it. You have got to open your mouth up and declare the word of God and the works of the Lord. And you've got to believe that God is going to do everything you're praying for. Don't you back up, don't you back down. And what you believe by prayer, God is going to make happen. And don't back up off of it. Know that God is going to save your family. Know that God is going to bless your church. Know that God is going to fill that place with his glory. Know that God is going to do everything that he promised. I'm telling you, saints of God, this is just not a Bible that came from a tree that we got paper from and we glued the edges together and put print on it. This is the authentic word of God left from heaven. Our roadmap, our compass, our help, our word, our light, our lamp. That is the word of God. You can burn it, you can tear it, you can throw it out, but you cannot pull it from my heart. It is the word and I will hide it in my heart that I will not sin against God. Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So prayer is not just, God, I need you to help me. Prayer isn't, God, heal my family. Prayer isn't just, God, touch our church. Oh, God, send revival. It is prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It is intermingled with, Father, thank you for saving me. Father God, thank you for being good to me. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for fellowship. Thank you for our church. Thank you for the opportunity to come back and make this right. Thank you, God, that you never kicked me to the curb when I made mistakes. Thank you, God, that you've been there for my family. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for watching over me when, God, I didn't even know you were watching over me. Thank you for making a way where there seemed to be no way at all. God, thank you. A lot of times on Tuesday morning, and, and, and others can testify of this, that we take the last 15 minutes and at least five or six of it ends up being us just coming up here thanking God for everything he's done. And I tell, the, I tell the precious people that are here, when you come up, I said, listen, for five minutes, we're just gonna thank him. We're not gonna petition, we're not gonna request, we're not gonna ask him for anything. For the next five minutes, we're gonna thank him. It ends up being seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes. And we have to jump in before five minutes is up because we quit praying at 10. We go from nine to 10. And we have people that are coming in to clean afterwards. So we, man, we make it happen in that hour. And the last few minutes, and we just start praying heaven down that God is going to be with us. But saints of God, prayer is more than just petitioning God. Prayer is an attitude of thanksgiving and saying, God, thank you. Let me tell you what else prayer is. Prayer is a time when you should go in there never empty handed. You should always go into your prayer closet with a sticky note or five sticky notes or a pad of sticky notes and you better have a pencil or a pen because the minute I start praying, God starts speaking to me. 
I came in here today at 1.12 and I walked up here with just these outer lights on and I started pacing back and forth. Father God, touch the place tonight. Oh God, never lift your anointing off the house. God, thank you for what you've done here. Thank you for the land. Thank you for the chapels that are coming. Thank you God for everything else I'm praying for that I can't tell you what I'm praying for yet, but God, I thank you, hallelujah. And I'm telling you, the minute I got up here, God started talking to me. And the minute I got up here, I had to run over here and grab a pen and piece of paper and start writing it down. So not only do we journal what we hear from God, not only do we journal what we thank God for, but there are times on a side note that he's going to tell you somebody needs called, somebody needs checked on. You better pray for somebody. Get them heavy on your heart. There are times that this happens, saints of God. So let me tell you, we've kicked prayer up a notch. It's more now than just now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Come on, it's more than that. It's getting down and saying, God, here we are. We are coming down at the end of the race. We are coming down to the last final and few miles. We are in those perilous times that Paul talked about. We are in those days where things are rapidly and quickly advancing. Saints of God, come on, you got to pray like warriors. God, help me to hold on. God, help me to pursue greater ground. Help me to go higher, Father, because he's worthy. Thank you. Let me tell you how important prayer is in Colossians 4 too. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. There it is again. Continue in prayer. God, God move. God move for our country. God move on our president. God help our president. God help all the people surrounding him. And I prayed for the last one too. And I prayed for the one before him because them debating and fighting and hollering at each other and calling one another names is completely disrespectful. It is not honorable. Come on, saints of God. Come on and help me somebody. We have lost something somewhere along the line. We can do better, saints of God. I know God expects better from us. It's not about this is a America, it should be better. No, 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 no. This is what God gave us and it should be better because God gave it to us and we need to be good keepers and shepherds of it. Come on, somebody. Help me just a little bit here. God, help us, Lord, in our country. God, help our allies. Touch Israel. But oh God, while I'm at it, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's Thanksgiving. First Timothy, Timothy said it like this. When Paul wrote to him, Paul said it to this to Timothy, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So the word of God, let me tell you how else you need to do this. Not just journal, not just take sticky notes to write down a thought you have, not just to put something because God will give you answers to things. I am telling you right now, there's been times when I've been praying that I was working on a project I could not get, but walking away from it and having prayer, God will give me a thought and I will write it down and say, that's what I'm missing and I can go back to it. But let me also tell you, you need to pray the word of God. This word is the will of God. So don't you start thus saying the Lord if it's not confirmed by the word of God. I'm not backing up saints because it's quiet in here. Y'all need to understand that right now. Quietness will push me further. When you pray, you should pray the word of God because right here is the will of God for your life. It's right there, it's right there. I don't know how preachers live without it. I don't know how churches go without it. I don't know how pe people deviate from this word and preach something different. I don't know how in the world they're expecting God to bless them. This is the word. This is the will of God and you need to pray that right there. It's right there. It's right there. James 5, 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So when you pray, you have faith that God's going to do it. When I lay my hands on people and pray for people, and I know some pastors, and I know some preachers, and I know some great authors of names, I would call out that you would know that did not pray for everybody. I knew that would go over just like that. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. There's some people that's not serious about it. There's some people that don't care whether it happens. And uh, I'm trying to behave myself. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. And if they have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse 16, confess your faults one to another. And 
Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It does not say confess your faults to another, then declare it on Facebook. It, have, I got, have I got any church people left? Confess your faults one, one to another. And the Bible says, pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Sometimes it's good when I can just dump my truck. Just dump it. Just lift it and dump it. Just let it go. It just feels good sometimes to confess some things to people. Listen, this is where I might be struggling right now. Oh, Brother Todd, you got to hang in there. These are words I hear. Brother Todd, you know what God's doing right now. Come on, everybody. That's confess your faults one to another. Praise God. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So make certain whoever you're talking to has an effectual fervent prayer. That's a heated prayer. That's not, well, Lord, touch him. It's not one of them prayers. It's a heated one. First Peter 4, 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So while we're praying, we're watching. Gideon's men from thousands down to how many? 300. He did this. The final phase was this. First of all, he said, if you're scared, walk away. Then he's got 10,000. <laughs> then he takes them to, to the brook and they get there and he says, everybody get a drink. And one by one, they went to get a drink. And those that, 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 that licked it up like a dog, which in other words, they put their face down in the water, he said, you can go home. The guys that went down to the brook and did it like this, they watched and they scooped and they watched and they drank. Gideon said, you're in. You know what he found? He found some men that knew how to multitask. Number two, he found some men that kept their eyes on what was going on and paid attention but could drink at the same time. What does that mean? I can watch and still pray at the same time. Because let me tell you who else is watching and praying. The enemy is. And it's not P-A-R-Y-I-N-G, it's P-A-E-Y-I-N-G and he's praying on the people of God. And that's why we have to watch and pray. I'm praying, God, in the name of Jesus, get in here. God, in the name of Jesus, touch my baby. God, in the name of Jesus, and we're watching and we're praying. Come on, everybody. Now, there's a few reasons why that God is not gonna answer prayer, and so we're gonna talk about it right here. I want you to go with me to Isaiah chapter one and verse number 15. Isaiah one and verse 15. And I wanna talk real quick about the sinful state of Judah. Isaiah 1.15 says, and when, you and when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. The sinful state of Judah. Now, if you think that God is going to give you everything you want, including happiness to your sinful life, I come by to tell you, you are sadly mistaken here. And this is where we find clear evidence. This is just the beginning of it. And I pray the amens get as hot and heavy as that one right there. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make any prayers, I will not hear. This is God saying through the prophet, I will not hear those prayers. Sometimes we have things in our life that keep our prayers from going about this high off the ground and then they just come right back down because we have everything mixed, diluted and we want God to bless our sinful efforts and it's impossible. It's not the word of God. Come on everybody. Maybe I'm not preaching to anybody in this church. Maybe I'm just preaching to a lot of people that'll watch this after a while. And I really hope and pray that that's the case. But I do believe tonight I'm preaching to some people that are doing their best to stay away from anything that looks like or sounds like and to eschew evil, which means to shun the very appearance of evil, much less go and touch it and get a hold of it. Amen. Mark chapter 12 and verse 40, beware of the scribes which love long clothing and salutations in the marketplace. That's just the header. Mark 12, 40, which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers, these shall receive greater 
condemnation, greater damnation. Look at that, Mark 12, 40. Which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers and these shall receive greater damnation. These are scribes, they love long clothing and salutations in the marketplace. So they love this external experience of spirituality and Christianity. But the Bible says about them, they devour widows' houses and for a pretense they make long prayers, these shall receive greater damnation. I'm telling you, there is going to be a major piece of carpet that is going to be yanked out from underneath people that pray good and make it look good and they're thieves and they're stealing and they're not in it for the right reason and they are not in it for the people and they are not in it to help shepherd people. They are in it to fleece the flock in more ways than one. The Bible said these shall receive the greater damnation. I ain't mad at nobody. (laughs) And to say it in better grammar, I am not mad at anybody, but I'm gonna keep preaching. Let me, let me just say this to our church tonight. Evil will separate you from his presence and purpose. Just in case you're visiting tonight, we're not one of those seeker-friendly churches. I want you to know that right now. It's, it's, not, it's not Burger King in the house. This is redemption. I just want you to know tonight, we, we will tell the truth around here in the name of Jesus. We're not here to sugarcoat anything. We're not here to make you feel better. We're here to get broke down so God can build us up. Which means this, we crucify the flesh, that's the breakdown. We build up the spirit because John the Baptist said, I must decrease and you must increase. That means there's something about us that's got to go and something about him that's got to get here fast. Pastor, give me some scripture for that. I'm glad you asked. 1 Peter 3.12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So stop thinking that God wants to bless my sinful lifestyle. Stop thinking that God wants to condone you being jacked up, messed up, and tore up from the floor up. Stop thinking that God is going to bless everything that you do that you have conviction against it but you continue in sin that grace may abound. The Bible said, God forbid. Now I feel old timey like I could just preach right there. The bottom line is evil will separate you from his presence and purpose. Let me just say delicately, let me say it loving and let me say it kindly. There are people in here tonight that God's convicting you about movies you're watching and you better heed the Holy Ghost. There's people in here tonight that God's convicting you about the music you're listening to and don't you hide behind somebody's head on a Wednesday night. I'm preaching to all y'all. I know some of you sheep so well, I can can see you from the way you nod the top of your hair. Hey man, I see you back there. God is convicting people. Stop asking God how much I can do and get away with and still make it to heaven. I don't want to get to heaven by the skin that's about ready to rip. I don't want to barely make it on a thread. I don't want to come sliding into heaven going, whoop, I made it. I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Come on, Jesus. Oh, this is good. Now, 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 now it gets good. Are y'all ready? This is going to get good right here. I'm telling you right now, these are the reasons why prayers get hindered. And some of you husbands, where are my husbands at tonight? Stand up. Where are my men that want to be a husband? Where are my men that want to be a husband? Stand up. I'm going to get all y'all. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? You can be seated because this is bad. I mean, this is good. (laughs) Sorry, God. I did not mean to put it like that. Let me rephrase it. This is bad for your flesh, good for your soul. Are you ready? 
Give honor to your wife so that your prayers will not be hindered. Thank you, Lord. I told you, and I know you're getting ready to say right now, Pastor, now you know that ain't in the Bible. Now you know that ain't in a word. Oh, yes, it is. You ready for me to take you there? 1 Peter 3 and verse 7. 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, your husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Husbands, honor your wife as the weaker vessel. Now, this is not an area where I take some egotistical, self confident stance against women to say this is what the Bible says about them because what the Bible is truly saying is this let me just break it down for you let me break it down for you my body is different than this precious little woman that sits over here at the weight she's at and the size that she's at her little bone structure she's got I take my hand and put around her little arm. She's the weaker vessel, which means her vessel. What is the vessel? It's this. This thing out here. This is the vessel. This is the vessel. She is the weaker vessel. It means that if you're a man, you'll take care of your wife. If you're a man, if you're a man, you will honor your wife. You will honor her not as a distinct, separate individual, but she is one. People, when people make mention of Todd, normally they say Todd and Jill. When they make mention of Todd Hoskins, it might be a reflection of the church. But most commonly, her name will come after my name. You know, Todd and Jill. If they don't know Todd enough, they say, you know, Todd and Jill. Todd Hoskins. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know him by his wife. I'm to honor her. I'm to honor her because she's the weaker vessel. That means I am to compensate for her because she's the weaker vessel. I'm to honor her so much that she forgets she's the weaker vessel. I honor her so much that I put her right up next to me. I honor her so much she feels like she has the strength of Todd Hoskins. Why? Because we are one. My wife should walk next to me and know that she's protected. My wife should go with me and know that my man's got me. That I'm okay right here. Because I honor her. I love her. I let her know, baby, I'm going to do what I got to do. Amen. That little incident happened not long ago. I walked out the front door and locked the front door. I said, you two stay inside. That's my wife. That's my baby. Hallelujah. Someone is not going to get in this house. I'm going to do my best. And so honor is about honoring her and, and, and loving her. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that can, that can come in and out of my life, but this one right here, I will stand up. If I'm somewhere and I'm, I'm laid back, if she walks in, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk over there and I'm going to love on her because that's my wife. She's been with me in private places. She's been with me in private rooms. She's been with, don't get quiet now. That's my wife. You can take this any way you want to, but I'm preaching it. And I mean to tell you, when I say private places, I mean to tell you I had some struggles going on in my life and she was right there holding my hand. It didn't matter what she was going through. She had time to stop and love me and help me, encourage me, correct me. Because I honor that relationship. Amen, somebody. I honor her as the weaker vessel. And so a lot, of, a, a lot of pastors or preachers could take this text right here and run a woman right in the ground on the scripture. Not here. I'm not going to let that happen in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Vessel only means this thing out here. 
And you know there are vessels of honor. There's vessels of gold and there's vessels of wood. Come on, everybody. And, and so, if you don't honor your wife, your prayers are going to be hindered. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. I feel like I need to say something else. People that have a marriage in the car that's much different than a marriage when you walk into church, no wonder your prayers are hindered. <laughs> Mind if I get a little swig here real quick? (laughs) I don't want my kids to be preaching one day and look over and say, I had a terrible childhood. (laughs) We would come to church and they were fighting and they couldn't stand one another. And we got out of the car and shut the door and everybody knew to be Christ-like once we walked into church. <laughs> Can I keep going, everybody? Am I doing all right? Am I doing all right? Praise God. Listen, you truly can, you truly can have as much joy in your car as you can coming inside the church. You can. The only time my kids knew to be quiet, the only time my kids knew in the car, y'all need to calm down right now is if I had to take a call that was important and someone was struggling and I had to pray them through or minister to them on the way to church. And my children just knew there was a time everybody had to be quiet and I have great children, thank God, and their spouses, thank God. Come on, everybody. And I love them and I thank God for them. But let me tell you, saints of God, our children enjoyed coming to church and loved coming to church because we hid the negative from them and we hid the bad people from them Amen. Come on, everybody. Stop acting like it's a perfect place now. There's some people you're going to run across where you're like, wow. Well, now me and her, we don't get, you know, amen. Y'all just stay over there and I'm going to stay over here. I pray that is not the case. But there will be times when somebody might have a bad day and you have to overlook them and be mature enough to love them. But let me tell you something, saints of God, this is a powerful scripture right here because some men think that they're gonna treat their wives like a punching bag. And I will tell you straight up, sir, you are not a man. And I'm not gonna blink saying it. You can get mad at me if you want to. That's just it. That is just it. In my book, in my book, in my book, okay. Now, if you have to pull her off of you and things like that happen, you got to pull her off and you accidentally threw her across the room and she landed on the bed. <laughs> I'm still going to have to think that one through. But you, 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 better, you better run from her. If you got that one, you just better get you some good gym shoes and just start learning to run so you don't have to toss her off of you. Come on, are we having fun tonight? I didn't mean to, but it just happened that way. I love God's people and I don't want to see people get hurt. That's nonsense. You, some intervention should have happened long before you got to that place. There's got to be a lot of honor. There's got to be a lot of honor. There has to be. Th- there are things that you should never even let get to that place. You have conversations in the good times before the bad times and the valleys ever hit. That way y'all know how you're going to respond when you get there. It's all about communication. You got to pray together. You got to pray together. Jill and I yesterday, last night, we found some time and we just, we just knelt down. I, I, she came into the place where I do some studying in Chelsea's old bedroom and they, we've got a pretty cool little couch over it. And I just knelt down at it and she knelt down and we just, I prayed and then she prayed. Do that. You, husbands, you pray. You pray. I don't care if you go first or second. Come on. Just pray. One of you pray and let the other one pray. Let her cry. Let her tell you what's going on as she talks to the Lord. Let her tell the Lord on you. (laughs) Lord, oh Lord, this is not comedy hour, but I feel the Lord helping me. Lord, touch my husband. He didn't even say thank you for the pot roast, God. He needs you, Jesus. (laughs) Prayer's good at our place. I'm thankful. I get to hear her pouring her heart out to the Lord and I pray with her and we pray one for another.
we pray one for another. I, want, I don't want to be too tough on you, saints. Men of God, I don't want to be too tough on you. Things happen in your old sinful life. You maybe you did some things you regret and you're sorry for, and I empathize with you. It's, it's okay. And, you know, things were involved. Maybe some liquor was involved. Alcohol, drugs were involved. Okay, we get it. But now that you're forgiven, don't do that anymore. Live a new life. Live a clean life. Get things straightened up. Honor one another. Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. I don't, I don't want to run anybody off. I want to run you up. Amen. But your prayers will be hindered when you live a life like that. Let me also say this to people, to God's people. You may not be ready for what you're praying for. The timing may be off for the season you are currently in. I've been doing a study, um, last couple of nights I've been, I've been studying about Balaam and Balak. And, and Balaam, there's a lot of controversy about Balaam. The more I dig in and the more I dig in and the more I dig in, I've found out, man, there's a lot of controversy about Balaam. Because if you read the story of Balaam in Numbers, you will find out that he's accurate. He says things because he says, hey, Balak, I need to go pray about this. Then he comes out right away, right out of the gate, and he says, let me tell you something. You can offer me your house, your gold, and your silver, and everything you have, but I will not tell you what God has not told me to tell you. And at the end of the day, three different times, he said, you had the chance to curse God's people, and he said, I'm reminding you, I'm listening to God. But there was a time. There was a time when God spoke to Balaam and he said, I will let you go with the men if they come and get you early. The verse goes like that because what's confusing when you go to the next verse and it says, and Balaam went with the men and God was displeased with it. But if you look at the other verse, you're saying, well, God, you told him he could go. But if you really look and investigate that verse, it says, if they come and wake you up, in other words, if they come and get you, if they come and wake you out of your sleep. Well, they didn't do that. The Bible says he woke up, saddled his ass, and he took off. That's scripture, by the way. And God's anger was kindled against him because he didn't do it the way God told him to. His timing was off. Come on, somebody. Nudge somebody and say timing is everything. Your prayers can be hindered if it's not the right time. I, everything we've done, I have prayed, God, give us the right timing. Are y'all ready? Let me just say this. Some of you should be glad that prayer was not what you wanted back when you wanted it. Some of you should be grateful that some petitions you prayed never came to pass. It wasn't a yes, it wasn't a maybe, or wait on me, it was a no. Some of you need to be grateful that God said no. Come on. Some of you men and women could stand up right now and say, come on, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you said no, no, no. No to the no to the no. Sometimes that's why prayers are not answered because God didn't say yes and you're still waiting on a yes and God said no. How many of you know when God says no? You just know God says no. Praise God. His time, his will, they're perfect. So don't push it. His timing and his will is perfect. Don't push it. Luke 2, 37. Thank you, Lord. I think I made it. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Wouldn't it be great to hear that a bunch of people from church got together, not to go out and eat, not to play, not to go here, not to go there. They all got together and had a big prayer meeting. Man, what I love to hear is there's some families that are closely connected um, with, in terms of church and you find out one of them was really going through something and they all jumped in and had a big prayer meeting in grandma's living room. They all just got in there and just stuck their face in the carpet and said, we're gonna pray till God moves. We do that with our kids sometimes. Come on, let's have a prayer meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll put them all on a speakerphone and we'll put the phone in the floor. Everybody on here, yep, yep, I'm here, Dad. Yeah, we're here. Made it. Hallelujah. Let's pray heaven down. We'll start praying. You'd be imagined that the gifts of the Spirit can move while you have five people in different locations on a phone. The gifts of the Spirit can really move on the phone. Praise God. You can get tongues and interpretation on the phone. Hallelujah. Come on, quit acting like God's confined inside this church. 
man, this is powerful. Come on. 1 Timothy 2, 1, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Revelation 5, 8, when he take, I want you to get this. Here's where you gotta get this. Because you hear a lot of people say, has anybody ever heard that our prayers are in heaven? Our prayers are kept in heaven. Anybody heard something similar to that? How many of you think that's true? You ever heard somebody say, my prayers are locked up in heaven? Guess what? They were absolutely accurate. Are you ready? I'm going to read it for you. Revelation 5, 8. Revelation. Oh, man, I've caused a big disturbance in here. <laughs> I'm leaving the church. <laughs> no, you're not. You sit down. You stay right there in the name of Jesus. Watch this. This is where it gets good. Revelation 5, 8. You ready? And when he, maybe some of you didn't understand how I questioned it. My apologies. When he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and 20 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, you said there was a container. Okay, go to Revelation 8 and verse three. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. That's where it's at. Is that not incredible right there? Is that not phenomenal? First Timothy 2, 8. Oh, it's good. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. First Timothy 2, 8. I will, I will, I will therefore that men pray at Kroger's. I will that men pray on the highway. I will that men pray at a rest area. I will that men pray at their house. I will that men pray while they're cutting grass. Neighbor called my wife one time and she said, I was getting the biggest kick out of your husband. Not only was he praying when he was cutting grass over here by our door, but he started singing and praying in the spirit just to let him know it sounded good. Hallelujah. I will that men pray while they're cutting grass. I will that men pray while you're roofing. I will that men pray while you're a contractor on the job. I will that men pray in the office. My God, you don't have to shout it from the mountain. You can just whisper under your breath, God touch my boss in Jesus' name, for I do. <laughs> God be with this company, Lord, for I do. Oh, God help me, Jesus. You got to pray if you're going to make it. I think I got it. I think I got it. Are you ready? When you come before the Lord and get into his presence, release your life of any wrath, aggravation, and doubting, which includes being mad or being bitter. Romans 16 and 17, um, Brother Tyler, thank you, Jesus. Romans 16 and 17, I'm gonna let you find it quicker than I flip through uh, over to Romans because I'm still back in the book of Psalms. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them and avoid them. I beg you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses. What does it mean? People that are divisive and people that are always offending people by what they say. Mark them, mark them. And, oh God, let's go this way. Because I'm telling you, they're gonna say something offensive, they're gonna, call, they're gonna be divisive about something, that's just how they are. Mark them and avoid them. Avoid the divisiveness and, and avoid the, the offenses. Yeah. Give me one more, if you don't mind, Brother Tyler. Philippians 3.17. Philippians 3.17 is a good one, too. Because let me tell you something. It's very hard to pray when you're hindered by bitterness or you're aggravated. Just give them to God. But brethren, be followers, followers. Thank you, Lord. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which, which walk so as you have us for an example. So find you some people that walk good and mark them. Yeah. 
because they, they have a good example. Last but not least, the one prayer I promise you God is not gonna answer, I promise you, it's the one you don't pray. Some of you want everybody else to pray about it and you won't pray about it and that is not fair. It's not fair. I can't tell you how many times, would you please pray? Would you please pray? Did you pray? Well, I'm asking you to. And it's almost like they get offended. It's, it's uh, <laughs> let me be Todd Hoskins for a minute. That's ridiculous. Stop asking me to pray for something you won't pray about. And stop telling people, stop telling people, I'll, I'll sure be a doing that. Will you be a doing that right where you're at? Would you pray for me, brother? Right in the middle of Kroger's. Give me your hands. Put, put that bag of Reese cups down and give me your hand. Put them M&Ms in that cart. Give me your hands. You don't need them anyhow. Father, in the name of Jesus. Just start praying. Just start praying. What do we need more of? People praying. Wouldn't it be great instead of people leaning in? What? What happened? Ooh, Jesus, Father, in the name of the Lord. And just start praying. It's powerful. You know, when you pray for something, it's because you're invested in it. If you, wanna, if you don't want to pray about it, you're not invested in it. You don't really care about it. That's why I think you have to pray for your family. Pray with people. But don't be embarrassed about it. Don't, don't be insecure about it. Don't be intimidated by it. Pray for people. Pray. Pray for people. Paul in um, 2 Corinthians 12 let me make sure. Let me make sure to read this for you. Because this is really good. I want you to get this. Second Corinthians. Thank you, Michael. Do y'all mind if I keep you another just a minute? Okay, you know it's gonna be more in a minute. Uh, Second Corinthians twelve and verse five. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be, and least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now for... For Paul, it would have been how much he knew. He writes two-thirds of the epistles in the, in the New Testament. I was preaching a couple weeks ago and accidentally said Old Testament, but you know I meant New Testament. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me, and this is what the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. There are gonna be some things that are hindering you that then you feel like hinder your prayer too. Because if they hinder you, they're hindering my prayer. If they're hindering my praise, they're hindering my prayer. And let me tell you, some of us are going to have things that we have to go through, but I believe it has a time limit. I believe it does. I believe it has an expiration date. I don't think everything you're going through right now, you're always going to be facing. <laughs> Come on, man. Somebody should have shouted right there. You missed a good opportunity. Come on, nudge your neighbor and say, not everything we're going through right now is going to last. Here's why we need to pray for one another, because we need to pray for grace. 